Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Stoneblock 3. In the last episode, we set up this monstrosity right here. We are now generating a lot more power than we were before. In between episodes, I went ahead and gave all these the reinforced integral components so every single one of these dynamos are now producing 120 RF. So that in total, well you can do the math, we have 12 dynamos, 12 times 120, that is a thousand five hundred ish, I haven't done the math. Anyway, it's a lot and we have it running into this energy cell which is further charging up this ender cell which can hold 100 million FE right here. And something happened in between episodes while I was setting this up that you're not gonna believe. I, uh, I completed a quest and well, <laughs> I got another spirited ender cell. I was quite surprised. Anyway, I don't need it, so we're just gonna put that in there. Now I have done two, well actually three other things. I have started expanding the base in this direction, however I am clearly not done. But that is for a future episode because we can improve this ore setup right here a whole lot better. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get into it right now. However, one quick thing that I do want to say is that in this setup right here for the ore thing, you can see that I have taken out three ores and I have added those here. So that is the raw silver, the raw bauxite, and the raw nickel. And the reason for that is they do go into, or actually they don't go into the purification chamber. They need to go directly into the enrichment chamber. And it was clogging up the system. I didn't know this. Um, and so I basically set up a separate system for this. Also, one thing that I think that might be worth it is replacing the in energized smelter with an obsidian furnace connected to the coal, because this runs really quickly, and in order for this to run really quickly, I, you need to put in speed upgrades, I have put in four, and I still don't think it's as fast as the obsidian furnace right there. So using an obsidian furnace or maybe a diamond furnace might be more cost effective. Anyway, one thing that I do want to quickly go ahead and test is I have made some ender cells, these starter ones right here, and I want to install them on all the matter receivers and also the matter transmitter. That's not what I wanted to do. There we go. So what I should be able to do is go down here, chop this out, place an ender cell at the bottom here. It has access to the 104 million FE, which should be powering this thing facing up is receiving an extract. So there we go. This thing should now power. And over here, we should be able... Do we want to move this? You know what? I, I'm not gonna... Oh. Okay, yes. This thing definitely wants to be moved. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. I'll place it over here in the corner. Yeah. That that seems that seems better. And the cell. Metal receiver. And it's gonna get power, so no, we will no longer be taking the damage that we used to when moving between areas. Which is really cool, and also is going to be relevant today. Because I want to go ahead and raid a huge chunk of this nether dungeon over here. Killing as many blazes as I possibly can, getting as many blaze heads as I possibly can. So that I can get as much blaze blood as much as I can. So that I can start making molten refined obsidian, which for that I need blazing blood in order to cook down diamonds and also making the refined obsidian in general. I might not get enough, I might underestimate how much I need, but we'll see. For now though, I think I want to go ahead and, first of all, I'm not making this mistake. Oh, it's set. Even though I broke it. Okay, good. Also, that is a very, very sick sound. All right, so if I go to the nether dungeon, oh, that's directly to the nether dungeon. I might actually go ahead. Yeah, I need another ender cell for the nether dungeon. I forgot I added that for that. Yep, there we go. One more right there. So if we now go ahead and teleport to uh, the end ring first. Dial once. There we go. Oh, hello. <laughs> Dig down here. Okay, they're getting power now. Exploration. Huh, wait. Build a gadget. Oh, that's very nice. I mean, I could have crafted that a long time ago. But still, that's very nice. All right, now I can teleport back home. Boom, that was a bit creepy. It was very dark for a moment. Now I can go to the nether ring. That was okay. Yep, it's out of power. We're gonna fix that. End the cell, just like so. 
it's getting power, teleport back home, and our thing is just gonna get charged instantly thanks to our player transmitter right here, which is even starter. I could upgrade it actually. And now we gotta go to another dungeon, die once, and then, yep, hopefully this place is secure. Place this, and go back home. And now all of our meta receivers will constantly have power, as long as we have power in the base, that is. Now before we proceed and take on the nether dungeon, I want to make a jetpack, the jetpack from Mechanism, and I've made everything that we need in order to make it. It's very simple, uh, a couple of tin ingots, a basic chemical tank, which is really easy to make as well, a basic control circuit and two steel ingots. There we go, we now have a jetpack, but we can actually go ahead and upgrade this if we make a block of steel, have two diamond dust, which you can get these by just crushing it in a crusher, and some bronze as well. And there we go, I'm a jetpack. Now the jetpack here, does it actually use power? As you can see, it's not getting charged, and that is because it uses hydrogen in order to fly. And that is why I placed this advanced chemical tank right here next to the electro... Oh dear, this thing. Uh, electrolytic separator. So that when it's running and pro uh, producing oxygen, it puts the hydrogen out here to the side so we can fuel our jetpack. There we go, our jetpack is now fully charged up. And if I take this off and place this on, I do quickly need to take a look at some keybinds. All right, so we can press G to change from disabled, so now it's not working, to regular, and we're flying. As you can see right here, we can switch it to hover mode, so we're hovering, or we can set it to, again, disabled. But we gotta be careful, because I am not resistant to fall damage just yet. Next thing I am going to do is bring this furnace down because it looks absolutely hideous. Actually, I'm going to remove it completely because I will never need it again. Place this brewing stand and I... Oh, I didn't get rid of the water. Okay, good. I'm going to go ahead and make some fire resistance potions now. Just so that those places are not going to be as much of a pain. And I don't think I'm going to need my diamond chest plate actually because this thing is armored. It has... Plus 8 armor and plus 2 armor toughness, which if I go ahead and take a look at my diamond chest plate, that is just the same as having a diamond chest plate, which is pretty cool. Alright, there we go, 6 potions of 8 minute fire resistance, that should be hopefully plenty, I'm not going to be needing the wireless crafting grid while I'm in the nether. And alright, this should be all I need if I haven't forgotten anything, just going to do that. Uh, actually, yes, I do need some more feral flare lanterns because those are just going to be really, really useful. What am I missing? Gold? Am I out of gold? Uh, yeah, this is why I want to set up some better ore um, stuff than this. Anyway, seven will just have to do. I also have seven chance cubes. When we get two... I should be able to make a 3x3 three three chance cube, and that could potentially be really, really good. Or really, really bad. I'm a little bit scared of doing that, but let's not worry about that right now. We are going to the nether dungeon. Oh boy. Now I have my big backpack with me, so I should be able to carry more things. However, I am not going to worry about things that I actually don't need, so... I'm only going to take what I absolutely do want. Also, I am waiting to place... Wow, this has been lit up a lot by these lanterns. That is amazing. Do I need anything from this? Don't think so. What are these? Slimy seeds. Slimy nylium. I guess that might be... I don't think it's useful, but I guess I'll take it. Now, there are multiple layers for this as well, which... It's really interesting. There's a chest over here as well. Nope, don't need any of that. And we have a blaze spawner over here, which is really good. Ooh, elite mag cube. You might be an issue. This is when we pick up some fire resistance. Because otherwise this is gonna be an absolute nightmare. And we enable the jetpack so we can do things like this. Aha! We are wasting the jetpack a little bit here, but I really want to get rid of this thing. I don't know if there's a... There must be a spawner here, right? Maybe? Oh boy, two hearts. Two hearts. Something dropped over there, like instant damage potion. 
effect thing. That was... That was not pleasant. Yikes. We do, however, have plenty of glazes, which is perfect. So I'm not definitely not gonna be getting rid of the spawner. However, I will be moving from this place. But I might just AFK, not AFK, but I might farm this for a little bit before going all the way home. There we go. Lay set. Really good. Okay, this is less good. This is less good. <laughs> What have we got in here? Lingering Potion of Slowness. Hmm. Interesting. Please go away. Nice. Oh, that's more of you. These guys are a problem. They are elite baby hoglins, and they're very, very quick. Do I really need to go in there? Because these guys are an absolute pain in the... But... Yep, those guys right there are an issue. Hmm. That's convenient. Okay, I'm gonna run down the... Oh no, there's one of these here as well. Please go away. Alright, gonna run in here. Place this. Uh, yep, this is fine. Oh, you're not fine. You're definitely not fine. Oh, dear me. Okay. Piglin brutes? Yep, that's a lot of them. That's a lot of them. That's... That could have... This could have gone very bad. <laughs> Okay, they're all coming from over there. I'm not actually able to kill them. Okay. That was some... Um, that was close. I'm just gonna head over here. And block this off. Because this is not worth it. <laughs> oh, dear me. Okay. Wait, something's dragging me. Okay, that was a lot. That was a lot. Definitely need to get rid of the spawner. Whatever's in this chest over there is definitely... Definitely has to be worth it. Because if not... Let, let's let's see here. I'm very curious now. Um, let, can I reach this? Yep. Not worth it at all. <laughs> and... Blocked off. Now, please, don't know what is dragging me, but it's really annoying. I think it's one of those super ones. Oh, dear me. Another instance where the jetpack is an absolute lifesaver. Because of all these magma cubes. Oh, nope, that's, that's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. Now I'm being shot at. This is not, not good. Not good. Just gotta get rid of this. The beginning of the dungeon was a lot easier than the insides of the dungeon, which I guess makes sense. Oh my, we have more piglin brutes. Okay. Hmm. What does this bomb do? Okay, not a whole lot. Not a whole lot. Anything in here? Uh, actually, with the skeleton skulls, we could potentially defeat a wither boss. The issues with these nether spawners as well is that they, oh, like they work even in darkness, which is <laughs> a bit problematic. That chest is trapped. That chest was trapped. Okay then. Good to know. Didn't think chests would be trapped in this, but here we are. This one too, apparently. Huh. Alright, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna check out, like, the downstairs of... Not here. <laughs> There's the staircase right here. I'm gonna check this out at the bottom. If I still don't see any loot that is really worth it, I think I'm just gonna wait till I actually have something that I need to get from one of these dungeons. Like I had the magma... the magma blocks when we first went here that I needed. Crying obsidian? Uh... Eh? I, I guess I'll take it so I have some of it. Oh, and this is the bottom. And not much useful stuff here. You know what? I think I would benefit more going to the end dungeon. 
I think I'll try that. Maybe. For now, though, let's open these. Oh. Ow. 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 That wasn't super exciting. All right, here we are again, and I'm thinking my chances might be a little bit better now that I have a jetpack. That way I might be able to fight the levitation. May I can, actually, with hover mode. I can't break that great deal of things very fast, but I can at least move around and I can potentially... If there are spawners, I can go ahead and get rid of the spawners. Dragon scale. Yep. This is more interesting loot. That's for sure. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> now, this is loot. I don't know what I'm actually going to be needing most of this stuff for. But, I guess I'll take it. Because why not? This actually pretty goes actually pretty well. This isn't too bad. A little bit painful. But I'll also be able to just float around and kill them very easily. That's an Elytra. Let's get it. Sky's the limit. I wanna get you. Please let me kill you. That would be nice. For me anyway. Not for you. There we go. Alright. Might need some cover here. <laughs> As long as I keep eating, it's actually not too bad. Okay, you gotta go, buddy. Because you are a pain, and you too. Especially you. Please leave me alone. I think you're the final one. There we go. Okay. I actually have some peace and quiet now. Wow. So look at that. And lectern. With an empty book. Okay. <laughs> I was expecting something cool in it, but nope. Just empty. Now I wonder if there's gonna be anything else. I mean, oh my. That's a lot of shulkers. My question is, is there gonna be any more loot like inside these buildings potentially? I mean, I don't see any doors or anything like that. It looks pretty empty. This could potentially be it. I think that might be it, but honestly, not too bad. I'll take it. Not sure what I'll be needing any of this stuff for, but now I have it. Now, something has caught my interest. This spawner from our RF Tools utility. This block can spawn creatures. It needs a syringe of the appropriate type, RF power, and also needs beams of energized matter. And then we have this, the matter beamer. This block converts matter into a beam of energy. It can then send that beam to a connected spawner. So I'm wondering if I'm able to make it so that this thing spawns blazes, then use create with this thing holding my cleaver, would I be able to make a blaze head farm? I think that might be something that is doable. So I want to try this. <laughs> Don't know if it's going to work the way I'm thinking it might work, but I think that if it does, it would be really cool, and I think it would be sad not to try. So this is a meta beamer. It needs power, and then I think it needs some type of item to then convert into a beam. So if we take this, I then need to make a syringe, which I assume I need to poke a blaze with. I don't have a single bone? Wait, I don't have bones? Uh, that's interesting. Why do I not have a bone? I do have necrotic bones, though. <laughs> so we can now go ahead and make the spawner. So I should have everything. However, I would also need an RF tools uh, wrench. Which one of these is it? Tool space. Spot wrench. So, uh, I think this one. Maybe. Potentially. You know what? Just make a stack of blue dye at this point. There we go. Alright. I think this should be everything. Obviously, we also want an ender cell. <laughs> I'm gonna be using these ender cells a lot, I think. Then, maybe if we take something like cobblestone. If it could use cobblestone, this would be amazing. 
then I'm gonna need a little bit of a bigger area. So if I maybe take this hammer and just, yep, something like that. Yep, looking good. So if I take the matter beamer and an ender cell, let's say I place it here with an ender cell at the bottom, giving this power. I give this cobblestone. Then let's say I put a spawner right here, which of course also needs power and then a syringe. But if I select a spawner as destination, destination set. I have no idea if this is going to work or not. All right, let's see if this is going to work. Got to place a and an ender cell over there. It has power. Then I'm going to get a syringe of probably a chicken because why not? <laughs> Sorry, chicken. Chicken, place this there. Uh, I am confused. So it, does it need these items? It might need those items. What if I do a blaze? I assume it's gonna need a ton of, not a ton, but a bunch of meta beamers with the different items that it's requesting, which might this make this a little bit more complicated than I thought originally. But if we go ahead and say poke, and then teleport back home. Water, 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 water. Oh, a bit late. But we take this blaze syringe, place it in here. Okay, so it needs sawdust. Did I see that right? I think the when it's uh, switching here, it's it can be anything that it shows. So blaze rod, nether rack. And any type of, it appears like leaves, seeds. I think I saw, I think I saw sawdust in there. So to get sawdust, basically you just need a pulverizer from Tinker's Construct. Uh, so, sorry, the thermal series and then put some locks in there and boom, you'll get sawdust. So now that I have all the items, let's go ahead and see if this is doable. So destination set, destination set, power, power, and then put sawdust in you. And then netherrack, blaze rods. Huh. I think I have it figured out. Apparently they need a redstone signal before these things actually turn on. So if I power that on, it's now getting blaze rods and netherrack. So what I can probably do is I can go ahead and do this and this, and they're all three powered. It is getting everything except for stuff in here. So I guess sawdust is unfortunately not working. So we'll probably need something like seeds or something, which I have plenty of, by the way. So we'll go ahead and give the seeds. And this is now filling up. It is going to take 30 seeds, I think for one place to spawn perhaps. So if I were to automate this, I can't really automate netherrack from what I can tell, but I can get a ton of it from the nether dungeon without any issues. However, if I want to automate this, I do have blaze rods automated. I need seeds automated if I can potentially. I mean, if I had an automatic wheat farm, that would make things a whole lot easier. So that is probably the solution for that. But let's wait, see what happens when this reaches 30. I assume a blaze is going to spawn. All right, here we go. Yep, a blaze spawns and then it needs to add 30 more seeds to the thing before it goes again. Which this works, but it's a bit too slow for my liking. So I don't think it's a setup that I'm actually going to be using, unfortunately. Instead, I'm going to use what I did before, go to the nether dungeon and just farm a spawner until I get a ton of heads. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we now have one bucket worth of blazing blood. Hopefully this is going to be enough to do what we're going to do. I don't think it's going to be, but we're going to find out. So to make molten refined obsidian, we need molten obsidian, molten diamond and molten osmium. Now, this thing is pretty filled up, so I'm going to try and empty it first. However, 
What I do need to find out is, can I smelt obsidian using normal lava? I can. It's just going to take a while, but I can. That is really good. I'm just going to grab a bunch here. All right, I now have six molten blocks of obsidian in there, eight molten osmium ingots. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the lava. I'm going to place in the blazing f uh, blood here. And I'm going to try and add two diamonds right here. Don't know how much this is going to use. It looks like it uses 25, uh, 25 MB here for per diamond. And there we go. Molten refined obsidian. So if I go ahead and add all those uh, six diamonds right there, we should get... Here we go. Boom, 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 boom. Eight ingots of molten refined obsidian, which we can then go ahead and take the ingot cast. Uh, or not. I made, it, made a mistake. I need to actually select the molten refined obsidian. And there we go. Molten refined obsidian ingot right here. This is awesome. Now, I'm not going to waste this blazing blood. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep switching it between lava and blazing blood when I need to smell stuff like osmium and obsidian, so I only use the blazing blood when I absolutely have to. Actually, it doesn't seem like it takes 25 per diamond. It looks like... I mean, I just added like 12 diamonds in here, it only and it only used 50 MB. That's pretty good. We can also make a block now. <laughs> <laughs> Which honestly is a faster way of getting the ingots other than doing one at a time. Getting a block and then converting it into ingots is a whole lot faster. And boop. And ka-ching. Alright, this is our 22nd ingot. And is that even a thing? 22nd? Uh, this is, we now have 22 ingots. <laughs> and what I'm now going to make is a bunch of armor. So a better helmet, some better leggings... And some better boots as well. Now I could go ahead and make the chest plate, which I will do just to have it. However, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a sword. Well, I need sticks first of all. And then I'm going to go ahead and make a sword. That's 12 attack damage. Yep, that's pretty powerful. But then what I want to do is make the obsidian pack. So, which means I'll need an axe, a pickaxe, and a shovel all in one. It's going to be pretty good. But I do need to make a tiny bit more of the refined obsidian in order to have enough. There's the chest plate. And here we go, the final tools. We got the obsidian axe, we got the obsidian pickaxe, and then of course we have the obsidian shovel all together. Makes the refined obsidian paxel. Huge upgrade from our current diamond paxel. I'm actually going to go ahead and put Iron Cleaver in here. Put this in here. We have one refined obsidian ingot left over. And we still have quite a bit of blazing blood. So that was not too bad. One thing I should note is that I added luck on my Iron Cleaver, which actually isn't too expensive. This is the luck modifier up here. And all you got to do to get a cornflower or a blue orchid is to go into the crooking section and just crook some grass blocks right here and you can get all these different flowers. So getting that is really not difficult. But here we go. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, we are looking sick. <laughs> this is awesome. Definitely looking forward to taking less damage in dungeons and that sort of stuff. Maybe I'm now able to take on the vanilla vanilla the overworld structure right here and actually be able to survive the encounter who knows but guys that is going to be it for this episode a little bit different than what we have been doing the past episodes but i wanted to do some more exploring and killing mobs and getting our gear upgraded which has definitely been worth it however in the next episode i want to get straight back into machine stuff we're going to potentially be looking at some auto crafting we have more automation that we need to set up i also want to set up some mob farms and stuff like that so plenty more to come so guys if you enjoyed this episode be sure to leave a like subscribe if you're new enable those notifications so you don't miss the next episode and i hope to see you in the next one and until then have a wonderful day and goodbye